Hey everyone, it's Berm, and this is Level Zero Networking. This video is going to be one of five in a ViOS home use series, and trust me when I say that ViOS isn't nearly as scary as it looks. ViOS is a capable, fast routing and firewall platform equipped with features for both enterprise and home users. For the most part, ViOS will not hold any hands when it comes to configuring anything. This is intentional, as trying to configure on Rails will greatly limit what can be designed and implemented for a user's network. This doesn't mean you should shy away from the product. Before we get into installing ViOS, first we need to decide what to install it on. Two gigs of RAM is usually more than enough. However, our system will be using eight gigs because we'll be extending the capabilities of ViOS beyond a simple router and firewall later in the series. Our favorite choice for ViOS is mini PCs with more than one NIC built in. The tiny mini micro market has exploded in recent years, making the availability of capable and affordable mini PCs very broad. While there are many manufacturers making mini PCs, we're going to recommend Mini's Forum PCs. You should be fine with any similarly specced mini PC you decide on though. Here are a few choices of Mini's Forum and their capable speeds. Your choice here will really be determined by your internet speed. Even the cheapest of these models comes with 8 gigs of RAM, plenty for home use. One quick note, while you can install this as a VM on a server, I recommend against it for actual use. You don't want your home internet dependent on something running additional software and possibly injecting instability. Now, back to it. ViOS can be downloaded for free using the rolling release. While there could be bugs in the code, it shouldn't be frequently, unless you're using newly added features. These releases are available from their GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. As you can see here, we've got 1.5 rolling. So all we need to do is go down and download the ISO. This should be a relatively quick install as it's only 455 megs. After the ISO is downloaded, we need to install it to a bootable flash. For this, I prefer to use Rufus. A link to that download is also in the description. Once Rufus is downloaded, go ahead and launch the program. First, we want to ensure that we have the proper drive selected. Here, I've got my 128 gig USB. Then you want to click selection under the boot selection and find the ViOS ISO you just downloaded. There's our ViOS 1.5. We'll be keeping the defaults for the other options. Let's go ahead and click start. If you've received the ISO hybrid image detected message, you'll wanna select write in ISO image mode, which is the recommended mode. You may also be presented with a download required message. If so, then just select yes. Finally, we're presented with a warning. All data on device will be destroyed. Let's go ahead and verify that our USB is indeed selected and then click okay. This process might take you a second. I'm gonna speed up the video so that we can move along. Now, while your device is off, you wanna insert your thumb drive. Once you've done that, we'll go ahead and power it on. Device manufacturers may have different methods for booting to the USB. For the minis form, you'll most likely want to press F11 to boot from USB, or you can press delete to enter the boot menu. I've gone ahead and entered the BIOS. Once in the BIOS, we're going to go to save and exit. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to push to the right. And you can see here we have boot override. So using the down arrow key, I'm going to select my USB thumb drive. And now I'll press enter. Once you've successfully booted from the USB drive, you should be presented with a grub bootloader. We're going to select the KVM option and press enter. For the sake of the video, I'm going to be fast forwarding through the boot process. Now that the system is booted, we'll want to log in. The default credentials are username VIOS and password VIOS. Right now, we're currently in a live version of the operating system. This means we still need to do an install. Any changes made in this state will be gone once the system reboots. So the first thing we need to do is install image. We're gonna get a few prompts on here. The first one is, would you like to continue? Yes, we would. What would you like to name this image? For me, I'm just gonna leave it as the default. You can name it to whatever you'd like if something else makes sense to you. At the prompt for the VIOS user password, you can enter anything that you would like. We're actually gonna be deleting this account later. I'm just gonna use VIOS. If your device has a console port and you'd like to use that, then you can go ahead and enter S now. Otherwise, you'll want to enter K for KVM. If this option to configure RAID 1 pops up for you, you want to enter no. Now let's make sure the onboard drive is selected and not the USB. 
As long as it is, we can just hit enter here. Installation will delete all data on the drive, continue. As long as we've selected the proper drive, we wanna click yes here. As you can see, it says we have no previous install. Would you like to use all of the free space? Yes, we would. For the boot config, we're gonna go ahead and just keep it the default, so you can just press enter here. Once the installation is complete, we'll go ahead and remove the flash drive and reboot. All right, our system's rebooted, so let's go ahead and log back in. Again, the account is gonna be Vios, and the password is gonna be whatever you just made on that installation. Now we're gonna move into the configuration portion. I recommend setting the host name to something easily identifiable. I'm gonna make mine router for the purposes of this video. You could use the model of your device or whatever makes sense to you. To start configuring, we type configure. And now we'll do set system host name and the name of our device. Now when you enter commands in Vios, the changes aren't complete. Vios uses the concept called a candidate configuration, which keeps the changes in memory until you're sure you want to apply them. To view the uncommitted changes, we can type either compare or compare commands. I'll show you both now. As you can see, the output is slightly different. The compare shows you a plus and minus for what's being added and what's being removed, whereas the compare commands shows you the command being inputted with the delete system hostname, and then you're doing a set system hostname as well. Once we've looked over the changes and we're satisfied, we'll go ahead and commit. Commit makes the changes active, but it does not make them permanent. In order to do that, we also need to save the config. You can also perform both of these actions at the same time by doing commit semicolon save. As you can see, it says we have no configuration. That's because we just committed it a second ago. This specific change that we just made isn't going to be break anything. But if you aren't confident in the changes you're going to be doing, you can also do what's called a commit confirm. This will revert the config to the last save configuration using a reboot. In order to do this, you need to do commit confirm without a save. Also, after doing this, you will need to type confirm in order to cancel the reboot timer. Usually this would be used in a case where your changes might lock you out of the device or cause you to lose connectivity. I'll show you now what the command looks like. Again, since we don't have any changes to commit, it just tells us that we don't have any configuration changes. Now to see the host name change we just made, we're gonna need to log out and log back in. As you can see, the hostname has been changed to router. Also, it has our username at hostname at the beginning of the line. So, by default, ViOS will allow clients to use it as an NTP server. This will generally not be desired for home use. So, I recommend deleting that capability. If you want to see what is in that section of the config before deleting it, you can look from config mode by doing show service NTP. This works for all the different hierarchies inside of the config. First, we have to go back into configuration mode. And then we'll do show service NTP. As you can see under show service NTP, we have allow client and we also have three servers. Now that we've shown the services, we can see what we want to delete. So we're going to do delete service NTP allow client. We can also delete the individual lines as well if we want to be more specific about what we're trying to remove. The default servers for ViOS are based in the US, Germany, and Singapore, and reside in AWS. So we're gonna only use US-based servers. First, we'll delete the existing NTP servers. Now, we'll add some US-based servers from ntppool.org. I'll have a link to the website in the description. If you remember earlier in the video, I said we'd be deleting the Vios account. Before we do this, we'll need to create another admin account first. I'm gonna be creating a user called admin with a password that is also admin. For your account, you should use a unique username, not admin or Vios, and a strong password that is difficult to guess. You don't wanna use something like root, admin, password, et cetera. So to do that, we'll set system login user and then the name of the user. Then we wanna specify that we're gonna add authentication. We wanna input this authentication using plain text and then we'll input the password. For the purposes of this video, I'll just be using admin for the password. 
Now let's do a compare commands to see what's being added and removed. As you can see, we're deleting all the allow client addresses and the NTP servers, and then we're also setting the new NTP servers along with the new admin user. I'm going to do a commit confirm just to demonstrate how that works. If you'd like, you can just do a commit and save. Commit confirm will automatically reboot in 10 minutes unless changes are confirmed. You want to proceed? Yes, we do. So now if we had made a mistake in here and we lost access to this device in 10 minutes, we would have our device back. So now we want to confirm. After we confirmed, the reboot timer has been stopped. Now we'll go ahead and save the config as well. Now we're going to log out of the VIOS account. And we'll log back in with the admin account that we just created. As we can see, the admin account we just created is working. So we'll go ahead and go back into configuration mode. And now we'll delete the VIOS account out. We'll do a compare commands. Again, as you can see, we're deleting the user VIOS. Now that we're not logged in as the account VIOS, this should work as planned. With the commit and the save, both of them were done at the same time. So now we should be good to go. This is the initial setup for VIOS. We haven't yet configured the system to be operational to the provider, but we'll be doing that in the next video. This is only part one of a five part series. Again, in part two, we'll be configuring IP access to our provider and securing traffic to the provider using the VIOS firewall. If you found this content helpful or you just enjoyed watching, please be sure to drop a like and feel free to give us some feedback in the comments section. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel for the rest of the series and for future content in general.